everybody, welcome to Backstreet Jelly Roll Cafe. It's Giovanni, your host. I don't know why I say things the way I say things sometimes. I just think with a name like Giovanni, you gotta get into like the Italian persona. Like, uh, I have some Monte Pociano with Mama Pelosi's Pancetta Via Piccata, huh? Um, <laughs> whatever the heck that was. Uh, today, folks, we got a great show lined up for you. We're gonna talk about a few things. Uh, we're going to talk about selecting a bottle of wine, and we're going to talk about uh, serving it. This is for the group of people that are entertaining, a group of folks, or if you uh, if you have a restaurant or you're a server or something like that, uh, this is sort of for you. We're not talking to the group that is like, uh, you know, serving at four rooms or uh, the French Laundry. Uh, you got to go to school to serve wine there. <laughs> but this is just the basics. And uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. I want to talk about selecting a bottle of wine. There's a few things that uh, you should consider first. I would say two of the most important factors is uh, consider your guests, for, for heaven's sakes, consider your guests, and consider what the heck you're serving it with. What are you going to pair it with? These are the most important things because wines, you can't just pull this great wine and cook that great meal. It doesn't work like that. Um, you can go online and there's there's lots of charts and things you can look at. Uh, lots of Even if you look at the back of the bottle, it will say what you compare it with generally. Um, and of course, when you're considering your audience, your guests, uh, you know, if, if people aren't really into wines, they're not really true wine appreciators, you're going to consider that. If you're serving a bunch of people who have a sweet tooth, you're going to want to consider that. There's lots of sweet wines out there and there's nothing wrong with sweet wines. But personally, if you found your, your style, that is one of the most important things. If you know your taste, this will greatly enhance your, your, your choice. And I know how to, how to cut down your, your guesswork when you're at, at the store looking for a bottle of wine. If you can, try to do some research on Google. Uh, there's some great wine spectators out there. You can discover a lot before you actually go to the liquor store. Uh, some of the first things that I look for, and now we're getting into more of the nitty gritty, uh, this is not make or break decisions uh, for me, but they are factors that I look at. I look at the label, uh, and again, very important, you gotta know what kind of a wine person that you are. I'm an old world wine appreciator. Uh, I, do, I, I do like some new world wines, um, but uh, I'm not crazy about sweet wine overall. I like tasting earthy components. Uh, I like tasting leather and coffee and tobacco and things like that in my wine. Uh, I like complexity and I guess that's what I'm trying to get down to here. So when you're choosing a bottle of wine, you can tell a lot of the time what kind of a wine manufacturer they are by their label. Um, you can't judge a book by its cover, but first impressions are also the most important, as they say. This wine, for example, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of got this animated look to it, It's, uh, but it's a very attractive label and it's, it's got some nice colors in there. Again, this is not make or break. Um, the other thing, actually I should have mentioned this first, is the year. <laughs> That's also to be considered with uh, with your budget. Um, as you know, we're, we're rating wines that are 15 to $30 here in Canada. So, um, you know, you're not gonna be getting these ancient wines in that budget. Um, and that's a whole other ball game anyways. But this is, for example, a uh, 2014. You know, and it's in its sophomore year. Definitely drinkable. Definitely probably has some quality to it if I've chosen it right. Um, Another factor you want to consider is the alcohol content. You know, is, and you want to consider the grape that you, when you're considering the alcohol content because if you're looking at a Malbec, let's say, or a Carmenere or a Cab Sav, one of these really big, lush wines uh, from Argentina or Chile, uh, South Africa, places like that, uh, and you see that it's less than 12%. Uh, one of two things have happened. They've either, either cut it with water, uh, there was some extenuating circumstance why it didn't produce enough sugar that year, or they, uh, they cut the fermentation short 
so that they ended up with some residual sugar. And nothing is wrong with either of those things, but personally, that influences my decision because I kind of like the drier wines uh, where they fermented all the sugar inside. I don't like thin wine. <laughs> and uh, usually when I see a Malbec from one of those regions that has 12%, I will pass up on it. Uh, that's just me personally. You know, likewise, if you're drinking a wine that's uh, like Tempranillo, for example, or uh, Pinot Noir, you know, where, again, depending on the regions and, and how it was produced, if it's a lighter grape, you know, and it's just got like, like very hot alcohol content, 15% or 14%, you know, maybe they added some sugar before the fermentation to, to uh, bring up the alcohol content, which, hey, that doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, but it's a factor to consider because I've found when they do add sugar, sometimes it's a little off balance. Sometimes you end up with this sort of, uh, this uh, Coca-Cola uh, film feeling in your mouth. I don't really know how to explain the mouth feel, but it's kind of this, uh, you feel it kind of in the back of your throat. And, and uh, yeah, I don't really know how to explain the feeling, but maybe, maybe you can get back to me and let me know what I'm talking about, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, oh, yes. Metal caps, I prefer the metal caps on wines, and, uh, and we'll get to that in a minute, why I do. Um, I prefer either synthetic or real corks. When you're drinking wine, it shouldn't feel like you're opening a bottle of Pepsi. That's just my personal opinion. I know I come, off, I come across as a snob saying that it has to have a cork. It doesn't, I'll still drink wines with a screw cap. But uh, there is something psychological about the anticipation before wine. And uh, it's been scientifically proven. The cork doesn't necessarily affect the taste of the wine. But uh, that's, that's important to me. I, I consider all of those things. And again, as I said, all these things I mentioned, they're not make or break. They just, they're, they're factors into uh, me buying them. Oh, one more thing I want to mention. This is kind of a trick that I learned um, after being disappointed with the body. If it, like I'm really into the thick wines, as you know. So what I'll do, again, you can't take this to the bank always, but I'll take a flashlight or whatever, and I'll just see if I can see through that that uh, that bottle. Now, that's not the most scientific way of going about it. Uh, but it, it does help. I realize that the color of the bottles do vary greatly. But, uh, you know, like that one I can tell is going to have a little bit of body to it. Okay, I think I've covered everything as far as selecting a wine. Uh, research is very important. Consider your guests and consider your pairings. Let's get into serving it. Uh, follow the recommendations on the back of the bottle. That's very important. Um, if we're talking about red wines here, they're best served uh, between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius. You don't necessarily have to serve it at that temperature. Um, there's a few factors, you know, if you're drinking it outside, what the temperature is. But generally, red wine is meant to be consumed um, five to seven degrees lower than room temperature. That's kind of a good rule of thumb. If you don't have a wine chiller, then uh, you can put it in your fridge uh, don't put it in your freezer because it really gets cold quick, but put it in your fridge for five minutes, you know, chop up a few slices of cheese and it'll be ready. And uh, that's a great way to, to start on these things. Okay, now, uh, again, I am going to be speaking to if you're having guests over or if you're at a restaurant, there's uh, a few things you got to know about serving wine. Um, <clears throat> you want to probably give an overview when you show the, uh, the people. Uh, there have been so many uh, corkscrews fashion. Uh, I think it's probably a bustling industry. Uh, my favorite is still the old trusty waiter's corkscrew. Uh, when you open the wine, and this is what, again why I prefer metal caps, is you see that little lip there. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about, folks. You see that little lip, right? Oh, hang on. This is what I'm talking about, folks. You see that little lip there? Uh, what you want to do is you want to just circumcise that top part of it. And there's a very good reason uh, behind that. It's because when you're pouring it, 
and then you give it that little twist. Uh, if there is a drop that comes down the bottle, that little lip is going to catch it. So, what you want to do is just kind of score this around until it's cut. Okay, you can do whatever you want with that. And when you're doing the cork, if, if as I said, if you're new to this, then you know this is kind of like having it on training wheels you can you can take the cork out on the table i don't recommend it i think uh, you're asking to stain something or wreck someone's meal um, i would say try to get into opening it while standing up now what you want to do is put the tip right in the center and just very carefully it doesn't matter if, if you take your time about this it's better that you do the customer wants to see finesse is just keep rotating that um, until you're just about at the end or I always go a little further just so I know um, and then you collapse that when you're pulling it out be very careful that you don't get it to pop off you want to just bring it just kind of to its threshold there and then when you work it out just finesse it because there's often a little air bubble in there that will that will uh, leap out. It's normal for it to have a little air bubble and you don't want a splashing, heaven forbid, on your customer or on yourself. Um, oh, and by the way, another good practice is to stand back a little bit when you do that, just, just in case. And what I often do, actually this is etiquette, is pull the cork off and you're not serving, you know, Generally, if, if you're talking about your friends and you're just entertaining or if you're at just some steakhouse or whatever, people aren't so snobby that they got to smell the cork. Uh, I like to smell the cork, so I just leave it there. And plus, they can pack their wine up later if, you, if they want to take it with them. So just leave it on the table for them to, uh, to have a look at that there. And me, uh, like a real bozo that I am, I left the glass over here. Always inspect your glass. Make sure it doesn't have dirt on it. Uh, your host should be doing that, or you know, when you're setting the table for your guests, you should be looking at that. Nobody likes a dirty glass, especially when they're drinking wine. This is very important. You want to serve the person who requested the bottle, a bottle of wine, because that person is likely paying for it. So, I know that the the tendency is to want to serve the lady, you know, or the guy's grandpa, or the guy's grandma, or whatever because you're a gentleman, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, the actual etiquette on it is serve the person who requested the bottle of wine. So again, stand back, give them just a couple of ounces, do your little twist, and uh, offer them to have a sip, you know, give them time to appreciate it, don't rush them, and uh, very genuinely ask them, what do you think of that wine? You know, can I get you, can I pour the rest of your friends some wine? Generally, if somebody is ordering a bottle for the table, they want their friends to imbibe as well. But, you know, if you're just not sure, you can ask, is, will anybody else we'll be drinking tonight? Things like that. But yeah, do remember that if you're serving, serve the person who asked or who actually requested the bottle of wine. That's important. And, uh, and once he's had his sip, then you can give him a more generous portion and, and serve everybody else and so on. Um, so yeah, that's the basics of serving a wine. I hope you liked the video. Um, like, comment, subscribe, sub a dub dub. And uh, get back to me, I have a question for you about uh, your opinions on corked bottles of wine or on uh, I'm not talking about wrecked bottles, <laughs> I'm talking about wine bottles with corks in them, uh, synthetic or real, uh, compared to screw caps. Am I nuts? I, I don't, I'm not crazy about screw cap. I realize that it doesn't affect the taste. I'm just talking about the, um, just the appearance of it, you know, and, and it kind of takes away from the experience of enjoying wine. What do you think about that? Let me know. As a side note, guys, here, I just wanted to say it's always a great thing to decant your wines. Thank you very much for watching. It's Giovanni!